Hey, this is Kyle Crawford from Strong Dads. Strong Dads podcast would love to thank the Crimer's Beer House for coming alongside of us. The Crimer's Beer House was started in 1982 by the Crimer family, and since that time, they have definitely become a Cincinnati favorite. So if you're looking for an incredible meal in an incredible setting, definitely go down to Route 128 and check out the Crimer's Beer House. All right. Hey, guys. What's going on? Welcome back to Strong Dads here with Merle. You know, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and I wanted to... Was it ours? It was not ours. Uh, well, I did listen to that, but I, I... You know, the guys had, like, cool names for themselves, like the king of the mic, you know? Like, I'm like, we gotta come up with something. We gotta come up with something better. Oh, man, hey, I... welcome back to Strong Dads. Here's Merle. Like, we gotta have a good intro here, Merle. This is... <laughs> we gotta have oh, something I think good. Trust like... me, I've got some names for you. Oh, I really oh, do have some names. Unbelievable. I, I, would, I, I think if I actually put those names out, we would be quickly uh, canceled right I think all of... the women that listen to our show would be done. All the men would laugh, and they would probably tune in yeah. better. <laughs> we might be on to something. Well, I'll tell you what. You think about what little pet name you would like, right. and I'll, I'll consider it, too. And we'll go from there. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna I mean, see. I'm gonna seek Linda for for your name. That I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna ask her what I should call you. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's running with all kinds of stuff right now. But I'm just not gonna go there. Okay. All right. Be quiet. We all got right, work to do. That's right. How you doing anyway? I'm I'm good. I just got off work. I've I got three pots of coffee in me. I'm jacked up. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're gonna have a guest today. And I'm yes. gonna get more into our guest here in a second. But we're done having fun here. But <laughs> when when Kyle, when you come in after <laughs> sleeping all night, you're pretty pathetic. <laughs> I mean, your eyes are just all shot. But when you come in straight off work and you've just had your pot of coffee from driving from Dayton, Ohio, yeah. all the way out here to Indiana. You are on fire. I, I, I'm ready. I, I think my body adjusted to the lack of sleep. And yeah. I just, I just, it's the norm now. So yeah. when it's abnormal, that's when I'm, I'm yeah. grumpy. The only thing is, is that you can't be held responsible for anything that you say, right? <laughs> Tell Jenny that. All right, let's get to the business here. Yep. So we want to uh, welcome today. We have a guest in the house. And um, our guest is a man who has been, uh, he's got a little history. And so we're going to talk about that history, but we're also going to try to uh, delve in deeper to the idea of what his history is about and what maybe we can impart to other uh, strong dads or just men out there who are listening. So um, I've known you for a couple of years now, uh, worked with you in the counseling uh, realm, and now you are, uh, I would say, a fairly regular attender of our Saturday morning Strong Dads workout, which Kyle does not even know what that is. He's never <laughs> attended that. Uh, but no, we'll get back to the task here. Uh, but um, married two times, Correct. divorced two times, Correct. Um, three children from the first marriage. Okay. And so what we're going to talk about today is really about um, divorce and being a single dad. And we brought in our special guest, Russell Brown. Russell, thanks for joining us. Because Russell and I have had an opportunity to talk quite a bit about this subject. And, you know, I can talk about this subject from a counseling perspective, just from training and people I've sat with. But Russell brings a whole different picture because of the firsthand experience and a very humble uh, firsthand picture. And I think that's been something that I have... Um, grabbed onto as a guy working with him uh, and just feel like, you know, after he and I have talked, man, you have a lot of wisdom that you have imparted onto yourself <laughs> and now that we could really help a lot of guys with. So I just want to thank you for joining us. No, I appreciate you having me. And yeah, hopefully it can help somebody else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would definitely be the goal here that we can reach out and, and get uh, some help to other guys. Let's thank a few sponsors and then let's get right into the to the meat. I like it. I like I'll call, no, I'm not calling you meat. That's meathead. <laughs> That's a good like <laughs> Anyways, Merle, uh, Strong Dad, we would love to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions for coming alongside of us. Definitely a, a premier a garden center. Got a chance to go down there for Mother's Day. Got my mom a flower from Casey's oh, Outdoor Solutions. Look at you. You're like all proud of yourself. Like, I'm a pretty great guy. And yeah, when I say I care. bought it, I mean... Jenny bought it. <laughs> she went down there. So, uh, for, yes, uh, go down there for all your outdoor needs. Check them out for sure. All right, very good. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Kramer's Beer House for being a supporter of the Strong Dads uh, podcast. Kramer's Beer House is just a fantastic 
a restaurant, bar kind of setting, incredible food, kind of like a little German cuisine there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but really just a great place. Uh, Mark Kreimer is the owner, uh, loves what we do here and we love what he does there. So we want to thank Kreimer's Beer House Absolutely. for supporting rock solid families and strong dads. I didn't do it. No, he, he's a two-way sponsor. There. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, all right. <laughs> Let, let's, let's get to the work. All right, so Russell, I gave a little background on kind of how you and I met, and it was really through the counseling realm. Yes. Um, but since then, we've kind of gone past just the counseling, and now you, you and I talk pretty regularly, and uh, a lot of it's just about fun day-to-day -day stuff, but initially it was pretty serious stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was. So give us a background uh, on your story, and let's just try to get people a picture of, of who you are and where you are. Yeah, so, um, man, I, you know, was first married uh, back in 2001 um, and met my wife at college, uh, at a Bible college that we were both attending. Uh, and then from there, just started life together. And I uh, was in the ministry for a number of years. Uh, and, you know, in that 16 years of marriage, we had three amazing kids. And, uh, and then we just had, you know, life happened and we decided to kind of part ways um, in our marriage. Uh, but even through all that, um, our, our main goal once we worked through some stuff was just to put our kids first and mm -hmm. to try to keep kids, um, you know, above, above anything. And so as we went through our divorce, um, you know, it was difficult for both of us, but, you know, we, we took the high road and the high water or whatever and, <clears throat> and just, like I said, put the kids above it so they didn't hear any of it, mm -hmm. you know, any of the problems and, and whatnot and just committed to being friends and, and you know, co-parenting and, and just trying to own and, and rock that. So, yeah. So uh, let me get it straight. So 16 years, mm -hmm. right? Three kids. Um, you were in a Bible college. You were actually working in ministry. Correct. Right. So we know how ministry works, right? <laughs> like, well, you're a minister. You should ministers aren't allowed to get divorced, right? right. Or they're, they're supposed to be above that or whatever. Um, without getting into any of all of the, I'll let you determine the level of um, depth that we, we go to here. I mean, what, what caused the breakdown? 16 years, I mean, usually people, man, you get after 10 years or so, you should be good. What, what happened? Yeah, I mean, I can only speak from my side mm -hmm. of it. Um, but from my side, you know, I think I, we moved up here and left kind of the church world, went to the corporate world. And I, I know I got focused <clears throat> in heavily on work. Um, I think I lost uh, my vision for my family, for myself, um, and just kind of got caught up in the day-to-day -day living. Uh, I was working out a lot, um, you know, working long hours. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of it, it was just, yeah, like losing focus. Mm. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, um, my world that I knew was kind of just changing and kind of crumbling below my feet. And, uh, um, yeah, the changes, the changes then started to, to happen at that point that, that I had to face. Well, what was it um, kind of an all of a sudden shock, like all of a sudden she wanted a divorce or could you see it drifting away and you just really weren't attending to it? Um, yeah, I don't know that I want to share that. Okay. Just, I, if that's okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, but then you find yourself after 16 years, um, you are at a crossroads of this is not probably going to work out. Right. Right. And so you divorce, <clears throat> you have the three kids together, right. you work uh, very hard to keep the kids sort of out of your messy drama. Right. Uh, and still take care of the kids. Um, then, you know, you're starting to try to find yourself again, right? Right. So, so tell me what happens on the rebound of a divorce. With yeah. A so when you, when you go through a divorce in general, <clears throat> um, you know, you, you tend to... Uh, well, you tend to isolate yourself. I mean, when you're going mm -hmm. through that, there's definitely shame from a male perspective, I feel. And then, I, again, I can only speak from my side. Um, but yeah, I mean, pulled myself away. And then I was just, I knew for me, like I needed to get plugged into church and I needed to find a community. And so that's when I started kind of searching for community and for church. And uh, I know I shared with you that, you know, I was joined a small group. And the very first small group I hit up, uh, we sat around outside and cracked a couple beers. And then everybody started bashing their ex-wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and I instantly was like, this is, <laughs> this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you join a community in a small group for healing and for, you know, to 
figure accountability out. and yeah. guidance. And yeah, absolutely. You know, and so for me, it was, um, yeah, I wanted to find that healing. I wanted to find that peace. Mm-hmm. And I knew um, that environment wasn't going to be, be good for it. And so, But, it, you know, it speaks to the idea that even in a Christian world, there are, there's pain, there's hurt, there's oh, yeah. divorce, there's all these things. So it, it doesn't safeguard you from those things necessarily Absolutely. happening. They can still happen. But even in that world, um, that speaks to kind of the leadership of the group. I have no idea what the group it was. I, I don't know any of that. But I know like a lot of times we all get together with a common issue right. or problem. Yeah. And we really don't take the time to think about a right way, a proper way to go through it. We just kind of use it as a rehash session. And here, that's happening within a Christian group. Right. And we talk about it all the time. You know, one of the worst people you want to get advice from is somebody who tells you what you want to hear. <laughs> right. right? Like, oh, yeah, you you know, she's a, you know what, and blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, you got six, seven, eight guys around. No, absolutely. And you, you heard that. So when you started hearing that, what was going on in your head? Um, for me, I just, just wanted to kind of get away from it. I mean, it wasn't even, I was... I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, it yeah. just didn't feel good. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel like Christ. And, you know, and so it just didn't feel like the path that I felt like I wanted to take. But I also think it, it feeds right into what you were saying about, you know, through the divorce, you know, you and your ex-wife had decided you're going to take the high road in that, right? right. And, and then to, to actually have a, a whole separate part of that where you are seeking, you know, what, what you hope to be wisdom and, and accountability with other guys and you see that that's not fitting in, that, that doesn't jive with the idea of taking the high road because sitting around and bashing your ex-wives isn't taking the high road. You're just feeding right into that because that's going to trickle into different conversations and, and, and then you know that, that's going to trickle into a conversation where maybe your kids hear that. And exactly. That, that, that the whole idea of taking the high road kind of gets thrown out to the wayside. Right. Well, I mean, that's just it. I mean, you know, um, their mother is their mother and yeah, right. she loves mess out of them you know Mm -hmm. and it does absolutely no good for me to air my issues or grievances with my kids or let my kids be a part of that because then i'm tarnishing the view of their mother and who is of the most importance to them you know Mm -hmm. and so that's been from the very get-go that you know we weren't going to bash each other we weren't going to you know again the kids know only what the kids know and and that's that mom and dad decided to be friends yeah And, Yeah. and that's exactly what you know, the path that we chose to take, and that's the path that we're taking today. Yeah. I think there's an interesting point here, too, in that um, not only do you make a decision to not bash um, your ex-wife, their mom, to the kids, but it really doesn't do you any good to bash her anywhere. Correct. Because it, when you continue to say, well, I'm not going to do it around the kids, yep. but when I get around my buddies, yep. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'll let it rip however I need to. What that does is it continues to fertilize and water right. a seed of, of resentment, of hate, of all these things. So you, it's kind of like, you know, you just close the door to this side for the kids, but you still let it grow yeah, in right. you. Well, and, I think and, you have a crossroads to take at that point in life. And, you know, I've, I've come to realize this. You know, I've, I've since got involved with another divorce care group that has been amazing and very nurturing. Um, but I mean, you have that road to take of either looking to yourself to make a change and to go that route or to throw the blame on everybody right. else. Sure. And I know like just in general in life, if, if you hear somebody not owning their aspect of it, you know, yeah. like there's, yep. it's just kind of a red flag in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to kind of take a step back and look at yourself and figure your part out. And, you know, I think I know, and, and, you know, everything bad that happens in life, you know, you can sit back and point blame to somebody else and say, right. well, it's not your fault. But there's no growth in that, and, and that's just not a healthy thing. Yeah. And I also want, want my kids to, to be a part of that. Like, you know, and you asked about, like, my upbringing and whatnot. I mean, sports was a huge part of my upbringing. You know, my dad um, and, and my mom the same of, like, you know, you fell down, you get yourself up, you dust yourself off, you know. Yeah. And, like, yeah. and that's really what it comes down to is, like, you fall down, what did you learn? Get back up, all right, now try again. Yeah. yeah. And so, can, can I even tell you too? Like, these are even when you sit around uh, with the campfire with these guys, and they all go into the bashing mode. In their mind, they all consider themselves real men, tough guys. <laughs> right. And and that's part of the culture that has allowed that. Mm-hmm. A, a real man, in, in the Christian uh, perspective, is one who um, does not sit around and express himself that way. A real man owns it. And man, owning it, it, it really kind of stinks at first, 
But once you do, it puts the control back in your hands. Okay, it's so a game changer. What do I, it's it is a game completely, changer. Completely. Because, um, you know, otherwise, like you said, you're you're waiting for the rest of the world yeah. to change to accommodate you, and you have no control over right. that. Right. Okay, so, but, but I want to move on. Okay. Because that was the first marriage. <laughs> yeah. All right? So Mistakes were made. <laughs> right. So that was the first marriage. But then, I don't even know the time frame, but then you met another lady. Right. And I'm going to say the time frame was relatively short. Yes. I don't know. You can explain that. But then you got married again. Correct. Okay. So give us some like because um, I can see that, and our listeners and viewers out here, our strong dads, can be like, okay, so um, what happened here? Give us some background on. Yeah, I, I. It was another group, and and this was a group leader that I had met, um, and so we started hanging out. Um, so, as like I said, as I was trying to find community, this was a community group leader uh, that I had met, and we started hanging out. And I, you know, I didn't allow myself enough time to heal. I wasn't taking probably yeah. the right avenues of seeking, you know, healing per se, uh, thinking that the small group would would handle it aspect. Yeah. Um, and so, um, it's definitely in a very vulnerable place. Um, and I think I just allowed some stuff to happen. Um, because I was afraid. I mean, mm -hmm. being married for 16 years, leaving, going off on your own, uh, it's 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 scary. You yeah. Know? I mean, you have the life that you do and know, um, and that was definitely a hard thing. Was like just mourning the loss of my family, and you know. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't know how I was going to pull it off. I didn't know how I was going to do it. You know, mm -hmm. and then somebody came along that was saying that they were going to do it with me and, and all that. Provided um, comfort. Correct. That you hadn't yeah. had. Companionship. Yeah. You know, the idea that um, a lot of us as men think, you know, we, we're, we're tough and we can handle things. You know, a lot of us as men have never actually fended for ourselves by ourselves. Right. Yeah. Whether we lived with our own mom and dad and then we got married. And so we always kind of had a nest of some sort. Sure. And we we discount the amount of security that that provides. Oh, yeah. And then when all of a sudden you're without that, um, everything from just daily companionship to sexual relationships uh, to just money and yeah. how are, you know, all these things come in and if you have a weak spot, it definitely finds it, doesn't it? Right, it does. Yeah. yeah. So, so through that, so, so after the first divorce, just a point of reference for all of our listeners, how old are your kids at this point? So you said you were married for 16 years. Right. So, good gracious. Um, so I think Eli was probably six or seven. Natalie was 11-ish. Um, okay. And then Noah was then probably 14 or so okay. at that time. So they still had a, had, had a, an idea of everything that was going on, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And obviously, you know, the, the, their world is changing as along with, you know, right along with you. Your world right. Changing yeah. Too. I mean, we were working out our parenting schedule. Sure. I mean, it's that first year of divorce, I think, is... Uh, it's the hardest year, you know, I mean, because you, you lay out what the plan is going to be for co-parenting and for your schedule. Sure. Um, but, you know, kids are getting adjusted. Kids are, you know, you know, un not understanding everything. You know, yeah. you're trying to cope with, you know, having your kids and someone home all the time to not. And then, like, right. letting your kids go. And then I know it was hard, you know, for my first wife. Um, you know, just dealing with that separation as well. Oh, yeah. um, sure. So, I mean, it was that first year was, was very bumpy. Um, and I know, you know, uh, rushing into a second relationship didn't make it any easier. Mm -hmm. you know, so. so you had said, I didn't let myself heal properly. What does healing look like to a guy who's gone through these situations? I mean, I want guys who are out here that have, that are, or have gone through, um, you know more about the healing than we do. <laughs> I think that's debatable. Um, but, no, but <laughs> what I love is you've experienced the wound right. more, so you know more about wound care. Well, I think right? I think there's a false sense of healing out there that you have to heal, and like healing looks like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Um, I think the more I'm in it, the more I realize like you don't fully heal. Like you're always kind of broken. There's always the scars are there. I know in Strong Dads we talked about scars, mm -hmm. you know, and so you've got to allow the wound to heal so you know how to cope when something presses against that, right? And how yeah. to communicate and talk through it. So I think like those tension spots and those hard spots of what happened, you know, like for instance, 
you know, going from one relationship to the other, I can take a step back now and know that like the pendulum swung and I grabbed the first thing that was farthest away, you know, mm. and so like personality In wise, terms of personality correct. that you went to. Yeah. And so, I mean, literally, I, I you know, if I started, I'm not going to, but if I listed personality traits out, I think that there would be a, a drastic difference between the two, mm. um, which is not a good thing, right? I mean, it's, that's you trying to like get away from that pain, I think, and go the farthest way, you know, so. I think you know the healing aspect is it's it's being willing to dive in, look at yourself, you know, and then also just take a step back and like who do I want to be and, and what do I want that to look like? What's my vision, my plan, my my purpose? Um, and so I know like through my divorce care, like divorce care was really good. So after my second marriage, um, I jumped into divorce care. Uh, we went through really bad '80s videos <laughs> version, um, and then, but we had a small little subset of group that went off on our own afterwards, and we started talking about like non-negotiables and like what our mm -hmm. vision and plan is for like if we do bring somebody into our life, like what what's the benchmark? Like what do they have to have? Like what are those non-negotiables that that make somebody like willing to fit in? And you know, I know like dating in your twenties. You know, when I was married very young, but dating in your 20s is very simple. It's like, hey, you look cute, and I'm cute, <laughs> yeah. so let's get married, you know. But when you're 39 with three kids and an ex-wife, <laughs> and, you know, and we have a great co-parenting relationship, and, like, I get along with her, her now husband. Um, you know, my kids are plugged into a school, and so, like, all of a sudden that algorithm gets complicated. Yeah, and yeah. You have yeah, to... A lot not, of moving parts. Right. Yeah. So, so um what you use the word um, the um, no non-negotiables I always use the word um, absolutes I like okay that. <laughs> so I, because you know we live in a culture of grayness like well you know I, I can kind of do this I can kind of do that you know I don't want to totally cut myself off from this and it's really difficult for us to say well I absolutely in my life, won't do this or will do this. Right. Like I'm going to draw a hard line and and live by that line. We kind of like to have our foot in every door we can. Yeah. And so what what are some of the non-negotiables, the absolutes that for you that you've come to it and you've come to them because you know they're the right thing for you. Right. So I mean, I think it's like the four pillars of life in some regard, but there's some caveats in there, but like Christ and and being a, a you know, Christian Christ follower first is the number one thing, right? And it's not like somebody that's like, well, I'm a Christian. All right, when did you go last, you know, church? And it's like Christmas three years ago, right? right? Like there's a lot of that kind of out there, but somebody that's active and involved in church because I, I'm active and involved in church and like I want somebody to be a part of that. And obviously yeah. there's a lot of core tenets in being a Christian that kind of build off some of the other things. Gives you some common foundation to work off right. of. Right. Just both of you saying we're Christian. And then, you know, I, I made kind of a joke that I just want to make sure that they're not a perfect Christian, you know? <laughs> like, so as I wrote mine out, like, that was my, my joke. Uh, the other big core tenet was just family. Like, they have to be able to be comfortable that my, my kid's mom, mm -hmm. you know, is a part of my life. Like, sure. she's always going to be a part of my life. And I, I want to be able to go to, um, you know, a choir or you know a acapella on Friday and I'm likely gonna sit you know in, in that same general area you right. know um, and when we go to you know kid events and whatnot like I don't want my kids to have to choose do I sit with mom and do yeah. I sit with yeah. dad and like that's just not fair for them um, and so like that being comfortable in that environment and that co-parenting environment being comfortable with being a stepmother and not having like not being like my kids mom my kids have right. a mom they don't need yeah. another mom yeah so I think it's it's like just learning that dynamic and like diving into Ron Deal and some of the stuff that he's done with the blended family mm -hmm. is, yep. is, is very good. Um, you know, and then I added in a couple other things that are just important to me. Like I, you know, health and wellness, like, I, you know, if I don't have somebody there with me, then I'm not going to do a good job. Yeah. So like, that's important for me. Um, you know, and, and they kind of trinkle down from there. You know, I think, and uh, you know, I, I've come to learn, um, and maybe this is still some wounds. Um, and, but uh, I don't know. It sounds weird. <laughs> but like making sure that this person is like a mother. They have a like they they understand parenting because yeah. I think it's kind of hard. And I know that there's always exceptions to the rules out there. But it's hard for someone to understand being a mother and being a parent that hasn't had that experience. Right. Um, and then as well, like they're just comfortable with their family. You know, I think there's like then they, it gets kind of gray after that. You know, sure. of like this would be really nice to have. Like I'd love. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I, I, I'll give an amazing shout out to, to um, 
So my first wife's husband's parents are phenomenal to my kids and treat them like their own. Wow. Yeah. Um, and to me, like, it is such a blessing to see yeah. them do that. And, like, it would be just an honor to find somebody whose parents would do that essentially to my kids. And I, like, I feel confident that my parents would do that to their kids if that, mm. you know, was a, a thing. So. Mm. I look at what you're talking about and for even the core of what you have gone through to, to get to where you are, there has to be a really solid commitment for forgiveness. Oh, yeah. Because without forgiveness, the resentment, revenge seeking, the hate, all of those nasty things stay in you that color your world. So um, how step us through that forgiveness process a little bit for sure of, of like how you actually internalize that and then made it real yeah I, I think you know this past this past marriage I went through was very um, just it was very rough and there was just a lot of I, I had to go find my truth and I had to find truth and I really feel like in that failed second marriage was me finding myself and I had to go back to, to the rock, to the cornerstone, to Christ mm -hmm. and what was said. And I kept leaning into the fruits of the Spirit, you know. And mm -hmm. those, those attitudes there are all anti-cultural, right? Like, mm -hmm. love is an emotion, right? No, it's a choice. You know, joy yeah. is a choice, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things, um, you know, self-control and gentleness and kindness, they're all choices that have to be made. They don't come naturally. And forgiveness is one of those things as well. Right? Like forgiveness is an, is an aspect that it has to be chosen. We don't always feel that way. Um, and you have to dive into it because you know it's what's, what's best. You yeah. know? And God forbid, again, like God judges me the way I judge somebody else. Um, I definitely will need and want that margin in my life because, you know, it, it's very vulnerable to sit here and, and say, Russell's been married twice. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a huge scar that I wear. Um, but uh, so I've got plenty of, of fails and blame to be right. made on myself. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so I guess the point is, is, you know, there's, no, it, it, there's not enough room in life to just hold on to that. Yeah. Um, there's so much peace found in just letting it go. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and you got to pick your battles, especially in a co-parenting relationship. Yeah. Well, I want to, um, circle into the idea of too. So you forgive, but like a listener out there could say, okay, he's been divorced twice. Um, my question, and I'm going to just be respectful in saying this, what is it about you that you are in this situation? In other words, you know, and I, you're, whatever it is that you have to fix about you might not be what another person out there <laughs> right. is listening, but the idea that you go through a process of working on yourself. Well, I mean, when you think about yourself, what were some things that you found yourself maybe um, getting into a place you shouldn't get to? Well, I, I think... See, the, that was the shift um, for me was uh, doing the non-negotiables that like we talked about. And then I just kind of had a moment where I was like, um, like, who do I want to be? Right. Yeah. And then even like our group kind of did this Andy Stanley um, um, Bible study on dating. And, and part of that was like, um, and I'm going to butcher it, but basically just like be yourself, be pursuing Christ and, and, and let, let the rest kind of fall into place in a sense. And so that was kind of a big shift. Like the, the initial focus was like, who do I want my partner to be? Mm. And then it was like, all right, well, who do I want to be? Right. So like that was like I, I took a step back. I kind of rewrote my non-negotiables that day. And then I took and then I wrote down like, all right, who do I want to be? And I wrote my non-negotiables for who I want to be as a husband, as a dad, yeah. as just a man of man in general. Uh, and, man, that's just huge. I'm serious. Like that's huge because what you said from the beginning, we always think about who I want her to be. Right. And I'm not saying that that shouldn't be part of our thought. I, I, want, right. I want my partner to be of a certain type or person or yep. faith or whatever. But I don't even know who I am. Right? Right. And if I don't know who I am, then I can get washed in any different direction. And so identifying who we are as men, um, our shortcomings, our strengths, yeah. but identifying that, if you don't identify that, then you will take whatever uh, is a fleshly pleasing um, desire, which, which which I think it goes. We talk about all the time. Like, man, how easy is it to look at your neighbor's house that's on fire? But like, ha, they should do this, this, and this. And all the while, your house <laughs> on, on fire, fire right? right? And it's like I gotta fix what's going on with me before I can go over and address that problem. Right. And I think that's what I'm hearing from you that that you had to take that that time. You those non negotiables. And the question I wanted to ask, like those non negotiables, those things that you had talked about, those absolutes. 
Did you establish those before your second marriage, or was that something that... Oh, no, not at all. It was okay. definitely after. That was after. Okay, yeah. I, I wanted to get clarification because I, I, I wasn't sure if I was hearing that correctly. So that's something that you have kind of come up with since your second second marriage. Right. Yeah, it was something, like I said, our, our divorce care, we had a smaller subset of people okay. that kind of started meeting, and, and it came up one night, and we all just kind of sat around really yeah. loosely that night and started it, and it's kind of evolved since then. Sure. Um, so yeah, and is that that that, that that divorce care that you're in? That, that's a ministry. Are you still involved? Are you still? Yeah, I mean, I still we still do hangouts and that kind of a thing. And okay, we, we chat a bit. So, and um, do you find that that constant care, that constant accountability, to be beneficial in the sense of like it's helping you grow and develop to, to the man you are today? Like you feel like that 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 is getting to where you're at? Yes, I mean, so I, I've I've slowed down and like we've done a couple studies like i did the main divorce care we've done a couple one-off studies okay um, and then uh, you know a big thing now is just getting involved in the men's groups i think so doing mm -hmm. strong dads has been uh, you know amazing don't give um, too much credit though fair enough. It's, 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 it's a group it's, it's all me. it's all frank it's not really yeah, yeah. That's right it's frank uh and then yeah i do a um i do a men's group uh every other tuesday okay. down at oasis uh, okay. with a really good uh friend and mentor that's and, awesome uh, so i mean those guys um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like finding those pauls in your life of people that you want to be like, putting yourself around that and trying. And, you know, there's definitely a ton of failure that comes. And it's, it is kind of like humbling or whatever, being even just sitting here. Because I'm yeah. like, who am I to be like doing this? Um, because like, there's definitely so much work still yet to be done. And, you know, um, yeah. so, well, when somebody climbs a mountain, I want to, and I'm thinking about climbing the mountain, I want to talk to the guy who climbed it last, yeah. not the guy who wants to write a book about how he thinks he should do it, you right. know? And so, you know, we talk about this, like with drug addiction, um, counseling and stuff like that, you know, it, it is so much more beneficial for somebody who's been through it yeah. to, because the stories and the learning are so much more real and authentic versus what you know I think from my chair it doesn't mean I can't be a value but at the end of the day like I don't quite know that pain or that wound right. um, so I do have a question for you though, like in terms of how do you measure your strength so I can see you know you're working through identifying yourself and what you're looking for but you get tested right right like you get a you, you know you're not with your kids a lot there's a whole lot of time that you're in your house by yourself right you attend maybe a divorce care group and there's an attractive lady there there's an attractive lady there that maybe you just kind of have a little bit of fun conversation or you hit it off so what comes through your mind now <laughs> um i don't know i mean it's the the non-negotiables aspect work i mean I'm, i mean i, I definitely I, I'm not going to compromise on those things, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, it's well, it's I a mean, good I can say, you know, like I've been dieting for the last six months, but I show up and there's nothing but dessert table sitting around me. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I this is my craving. And you know, when you sit in your house by yourself, or right. you know, you feel that loneliness and that lack of companionship, you know, and all of a sudden we find somebody that we go, man, that just feels good. Keeping that, you know, under control or, or recognizing it maybe, you know, like, okay, how do I deal with this? Because right. I don't want to just get sucked into the feel-good feeling. Right. Yeah. So that, that is something that has to be on your mind. It definitely is. I mean, I think it's, you know, like, I don't want to bring anybody home that, like, my parents wouldn't find, like, a part of our family that my kids couldn't be around and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And like again, like I think it's floating through those non-negotiables. So, um, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, it's well, I, and I I think I'm hearing like you know that that's part of that healing process. That's hard. That that's part of the process of getting to where you're at now. Is is having you know you're still gonna fail, right? As men of faith, we you know regardless if you love Jesus or not. You're gonna fail, right? right. And, and you're gonna have those times where you know that 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 table of sweets looks really good, and then you have to like. You know, maybe maybe you do like go grab one cupcake, and then it's like, wait a second, I've been here before, right? And and it's that healing process, and getting to the point where you're like, all right, these are my non-negotiables, the things I'm not gonna let go right. of, yeah, that's and the I'm gonna hold stick. off. Exactly, just yeah. like you're saying, I, I think that's it plays right into that whole healing process because it's a, you know, just like you're saying, those scars that you have, things lean into those, right. and it reminds you of those things. You're like, all right. I have to do this a little different this time. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think that's definitely a huge factor is just learning from your mistakes and what got you to where you are. Um, 
you know, I, I think the big thing about strengths is is like knowing that even with a strength, there's always a weakness attached to it. And sure. vice versa with a weakness, there's a strength attached to it, you know. And so doing a lot of the Briggs Myers and Enneagram stuff, like learning, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, like, you know, I've, I've been called a people pleaser in a very negative, slangy kind of a way. And there's definitely a, a bad part of being a people pleaser, but there's a great part of being That's right, a people yeah. pleaser because there's a lot of empathy involved and you sure. can help heal people. And like, I love that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I just have to balance that aspect mm -hmm. and, and yeah. myself in that. So um, sometime back, you and I were talking and you, uh, you questioned me. Actually, I think it was more my wife, Linda. And, and I just <laughs> want to bring this up, okay? I think maybe she may have said or she quoted something from uh, maybe divorce care literature or something, but, you know, it takes about three years for somebody to be gone through a divorce and then prepared or ready to marry again. And we met and you were like, three years? Like, <laughs> three years? And, and we started to talk about that, like, well, what does that really mean? And it really... Um, it was funny because I think I dismissed it like, well, no, it's not like three years. It's more like, when are you healed? Right. And we started walking through like the healing process. And when you go through and you talk about all of the things that you have tried to heal and are continuing to heal through, it takes about three years. But <laughs> like, you know, it's like, so not getting hooked on, well, at the three year mark, I will be ready. No, it might take you 10 years. Right. It just depends on how well you did your wound management, how well you took care of yourself, and you recognize the things that we're talking about here today. If you are still finding yourself angry, resentful, right. yeah. blaming, if you are still in that dad, strong dads out there, if you're listening and you're in a divorce setting and you are still into that mode of thinking, you're not ready to be in another relationship. You're just not. And because you've got too much ugly already in you and you're gonna bring somebody else into that. And it's gonna contaminate that next relationship. Right. Yeah, I think, I mean, that was, again, like going into uh, like the Andy Stanley uh, aspect of, you know, it was like if you ran into somebody you had dated in, in Walmart, would you run and hide or would you be like, hey, you know, like if you're with your wife at the time, right. like, I dated this person and they're an awesome person, right? Yeah. And so I think the point is, is like, could you face that person? Like, are you living a way that you want to live and like find, you know, leaving, I say leaving people better than you found them, just in general. That's, that's like a, a right. general rule in life, you know, right. and that's definitely something that, that I try to do. Um, and then, I, you know, I've been reading or at least working my way through uh, Ron Deal's uh, The Single Parent Dating. And there's a lot of really good um, mm -hmm. stuff in there on dating and, and just knowing if you're ready. And then the giving yourself permission to, to not know something until it happens at times, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's a big one. I think we tend to beat ourselves up or we run off and hide or whatever. Like, you know, we talk through emotions at Strong Dads. Right. And sometimes you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. And like, so giving yourself permission to just learn how to manage it. And I don't know, like, I, th I think from, you know, again, like wounds, wounds are always there. Like the memories and, and all yep. that stuff is there. It's not like a wound gets healed and you just forget. Like it's, yeah. it's always going to be there. And I think it's learning how to manage that. So with healthy boundaries, I mean, it's huge. And I know like through that, the last couple years like learning boundaries like I always knew about boundaries like I said I went to I went to Bible college and we read boundaries of the book um, and it, it wasn't until this past year that all of that really started to click and to fall into play of like making sure that I control myself and then making sure that I don't allow somebody else to, to dictate how I'm going to respond and giving myself mm -hmm. margin when needed to do yeah. those things in a healthy manner yeah that's a great thing I'm sitting here thinking as you're talking like it's up to us to decide to whether we're going to take our wounds and turn them into wisdom or whether we're going to turn them into more wreckage. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's up to us to yeah. make that, that decision. What am I going to do with this wound? Hey, I, you know, I, I got this bad wound on my arm. Well, next time I'm not going to do this or this or this or I'm going to do it differently so I don't put my arm in that situation. And so we really do have a say in how we move forward. Yeah. You know? So what, what, what's the time frame now? So your, your second divorce... Um, you know, you, you went through the second divorce. How how, how past are we from that currently? Well, the, yeah, the separation happened um, a little over a year ago. Okay. So at the beginning of last year was when the separation happened, and then it was just kind of a process of actually going through the legal route of getting divorced. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, it's been it's been about a year and a half from from separation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of yeah happened. So. Yeah, and and I mean. Um, 
I invited Russell on the show because um, you're not where you were. <laughs> you're probably not quite where you want to be. No. Right? But um, I think his story and sharing the walk yeah. through it is really an important story. And so I just want to thank you for giving us that insight and being vulnerable like this just yeah. because, you know, uh, nobody really needs to know everybody's dirty lines, right? <laughs> right. But you kept it very respectful. And, um, you know, I have to say that um, I've worked with you through these situations. And whether other people believe it or not, I've never heard you bash um, either of your ex-wives. Um, you've always talked respectfully. Um, and I just have to give you kudos to that because yeah. Yeah, I, there were times when I wanted to talk bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just your calm demeanor of, no, I want to do things the right way, um, just is very reassuring. So I just yeah. want to thank you for that. That uh, teaches us all a lot. So, and wrapping up, what are some things that you... I get a good takeaway for our dads out there. What's a good takeaway for, take for right, a man. single dad or a divorced dad who's trying to get it together? Yeah, I think it's, you know, just dive into who you want to be and, like, take that time to... Stay. It's so easy, I think, like, especially with COVID happening and, like, you're, you are, like, there's times you're just at home and... But, like, figuring out, like, who you want to be and, like, the steps that you need to get to there. And then just kind of, like, checking back in and making sure that you're always, you know, resetting and going back. Because it's so easy to drift. It's so easy to become unintentional. Um, you know, and I, 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 to this day, like, there's still things that I do that I'm like, oh, this isn't what I want to be. Mm. Like, you know, like, just sitting out watching TV and my kids, like, I should be more engaged yeah. with my kids. Or yeah. I should be studying for something with work. Or I should be reading instead of watching yeah. Netflix. And, like, so there's a thousand things that I have to constantly check. And then, like, just, you know, giving yourself permission to fail, I guess, a little bit is okay. You know, because yeah. there's that shame circle of, like, mm. falling back in. But, you know, I think it's just sh trying to, like... You know, every day is a new day to start. It's like working out, right? Like, if you keep yeah. putting it off till Monday, like, it's never going to happen. I'm starting um, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad example for... <laughs> He's got Mondays stacked out for centuries. Yeah. I'm starting tomorrow. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's just being intentional and, you know, finding that purpose of who you want to be and what, I mean, it's, it's, there's, oh, you can always reinvent yourself and you can always mm -hmm. figure out who that person is. I think you have to learn who the core of who you are as a person um, you know, God God made us a specific way. I have a personality that I can't change, mm -hmm. you know, but there are things about me that I can change. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't want to change my personality and be somebody that I'm not, cause, but I also want to, like, strive to be a better person. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that, that's great stuff. Well, again, we just want to thank Russell for yeah, joining man. us here on Strong Dads. Um, your insight and your willingness to share your walk right here is, is good. Um, any of you Strong Dads, out there or even our ladies that are listening to this if you are in a situation like this or know of a man that's in a situation like this um, please don't don't let your mind go sideways in a bad way on these things there's way to get help uh, please reach out to rock solid families uh, you can check us out on our website rocksolidfamilies.org you can call us at 812-576-7625 um, but don't let yourself get stuck in the vision that the world has yeah. of, of the divorce and just messing it up. I always say when I'm working with couples, especially on the parenting realm, you may be divorced, but you're married for life oh, yeah. if you have children. Yeah. If you have children, they are the two became one, and that one is the result of, of what relationship you had. And so um, everybody wins when the parents of that child can come together yeah. Yeah. for the sake of that child. Yeah, I think you, you just said it there and it definitely hit home. Like, I feel like the culture has this predetermined like criteria of what a divorced couple looks like and they hate each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And like it doesn't need to be that way. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Right. Know? And I think regardless, like I can only control my side of it and I can live the life I want to live and like yeah. treat, you know, my ex is my kid's mom the way like I want to be treated and the way I think she deserves to be treated and the way you're still setting that model and example for future relationships as well. yeah yeah so so good man I, I we, we talk all the time on this show about seeking wisdom and, and man if you guys are out there you you are going through a divorce just like you're saying Merle gone through man I think Russell you have a lot of wisdom that you can speak into the lives of other dads um, that are going through similar situations as messy as those situations you know can, can be Man, if you guys want to, you know, hear wisdom, I think what you're talking, it, it really came to, at least to me, man, I, I've never gone through divorce, but I, I, I got something from this show, and I hope you guys out there did too, 
uh, continues to show, you know, to, to share this show. Uh, just like you're saying, Merle, reach out. Man, seek that wisdom. Seek that counsel from, from other guys who have gone through it. Seek wisdom from people who, who can you know, speak truth to you, not feed into <clears throat> what, what society tells you and, and not feed into that mess of, of bashing your spouse. Uh, man, take the higher road. Be the bigger man. Um, don't don't you know put yourself in a situation where that's even going to be a possibility. You know, flee from those situations. If you're sitting at work, I know we do it all the time at work. We'll sit around the kitchen table and guys, we'll talk about everything. Man, if you're in a situation where guys are, are doing that and they're telling you, you should tell your wife off and tell her to, man, that that's not what we what what you should be seeking. You should be seeking that that wise counsel from men who are going to speak truth again. Not telling you things you want to hear, telling you things that you need to hear. Yeah, for sure. All right, so um, we just want to thank all you guys. Uh, if you like what you hear, give us a five star rating, uh, subscribe to our shows, share our shows. These are the uh, methods that we need you to help us with. So we want to thank you guys for that. We want to thank our sponsors. Absolutely. Casey Outdoor Solutions, Crimer's Beer House. Thanks so much for coming alongside of us. We greatly do appreciate it. So it allows us to keep putting these messages out there. So thanks so much for you guys. Definitely check those out. All right. So go out there and be a strong dad. I'd like to welcome Casey's Outdoor Solutions as a new sponsor to our podcast. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Casey's offers a wide selection of plants, landscaping materials, home and garden decor, and gifts for every occasion. Casey's is committed to providing exceptional service, a unique shopping experience, and value to every customer. Stop in and see what makes Casey's so unique. Located at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, or call 812-537-3800. Let Casey's help you add beauty to your home. Let's go start a business. Like maybe we, we could do an IT business. I'm really good at that. Oh, you're great at IT work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll last about a day. (laughs) Say yeah.